So I'm a big Woody Allen fan, and there's something constant in old Woody Allen movies, and that is this constant reference to talk therapy. You know, in the late 50s and all through the 60s, it was almost posh to have a personal therapist and to go forever, to have your weekly meeting and, and just talk it out. And you know, in the movies, and even in real life, you, they actually did have a couch um, that's become kind of outdated. But the interesting thing is that the whole thing has become outdated. In fact, even according to the American Psychological Association, um, psychotherapists are losing business. <coughs> Time Magazine published an article recently where they talked about this, and apparently numbers are down. You know, the numbers of, of people seeking psychotherapy are, have fallen to the point where psychotherapists are now looking for a new gig, so a lot of them are taking up life coaching. And um, part of it is because people want instant gratification. They just want to buy a solution off of eBay. And, and ongoing you know, psychotherapy for 10, 20 years is not exactly instant. But the more interesting part of it is that it doesn't seem to work. In fact, there's little to no evidence that it works. There are certain modalities uh, that are better researched than others, like uh, CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, and things of this nature that are helpful for things like phobias and OCD. But generally speaking, talking and talking to the point of probing and ruminating into the subconscious causes for things seems actually to make things worse. Yogi Bhajan talks about this level of psychotherapy and this level of, of psychology. And I want to read to you a quote. And this comes from 2000 when he was teaching in Española. He says, without an understanding of parapsychology, the psychology of the beyond, we will suffer in a very indirect way. Our local psychology moves around a focal point, an axle of life. This is very interesting. He says, and this is Yogi Bhajan's words from 2000, he says, our local psychology moves around a focal point, an axle of life. As the earth goes around the sun, so in other words, the psychology that he calls local, which is basically the kind of talk therapy that I was referencing from the Time Magazine article, is a kind of approach that's very, very localized and very, very fixed on a certain point or level of reality. Let me continue. Our cooperative psychology, our own circle, our whole world of imagination and thoughts moves as the earth moves around itself in its orbit. Yogiji continues, sometimes the applied social psychology puts people to a task which is not real, not necessary. He goes on, sometimes the reactive social psychology, for example, where you're mad at your mother and father, makes people do things which are unnecessary. When people get into their drama, their neuroses or psychoses, uplift them to a new level, he says. Elevate them so that they have a new surface to sail on. And the next line is too good to pass up, so I'll continue for one more line. He says you can study, get college degrees, and become as professional as you can be, but you will be stupid in the beginning, stupid in the middle, and stupid in the end if you do not know the psychology of the beyond. Thank you, Yogiji. I had to quote it because I, I couldn't have topped that, you see. And I thought about that. And when I was thinking about that particular line about how you can study and study and be clever and clever and, and book learned and degrees all over the wall and all of this stuff, and you'll still be stupid. And of course, he could get away with that kind of thing with his booming voice and Indian accent. And we can't, I could never get away with that, but I've experienced it. For example, the first time I walked into a Zen center for a Zen retreat, 
Oh, and I was so full of myself. Oh, I had read Alan Watts, and I had read all, and I was a big, since I was 18 years old, and I was reading all the Zen koans and classics, and I was such a big shot. And I walked in, and nobody cared. <laughs> nobody was impressed. Oh, I teach Zen, I teach Eastern philosophy. Oh. Nobody cared. The only thing they cared about was, can you sit on the cushion for more than a minute without looking at your watch, without wiggling, without, my knee hurts, I'm hungry, I'm hot, I'm cold, get me out of here. These people are insane. I can't do one more day of this. Can I sit on the cushion without all of that, without my own ruminating mind screaming at me? That's all they cared about. How do we get into that vastness that Yogi Ji talks about? He says the local psychology, basically he was saying what the Time Magazine said, the local psychology or this focus on the immediate, what is the cause of this? Why did I do this? Well, I said this and you said this, and I don't know why I said it. I'm gonna tell him, I'm not gonna, and I'm really pissed off about this and I, I just can't live with this. And all of this ruminating, how do we get into what he calls the parapsychology or what he later refers to as the vastness? How do we get out of this pivot he uses the analogy of the earth going around its axis. How do we get out of this, this pivot, this localization, this being stuck? That's why we're in this room. We have the tools to take us into that vastness. It's kind of like stomping around, in the, like when I'm walking my dog and they've got the sprinklers. I can stomp right through it and get all wet, or I can say, hmm, I can go around it. We have to go to a higher place. You have to uplift people, he says. We have to go around it, find some way to bring light in, to bring the vastness into our soul, to awaken, to uplift ourselves to a higher frequency where we see differently, but more, where we feel differently, where we know differently. And that can't be gained from books, from data, from information, from degrees hanging on the wall. He says there's no way to gain that grace but through meditation. Because meditation is nothing else but giving yourself or opening up to that vastness. And I would even go further, going past the ordinary focusing tools of meditation into what the mystics call contemplation, which is not analytic at all. But it's going beyond the tools of knowing, okay, I'm breathing, or I'm focusing on this mandala, or I'm focusing on this mantra, going beyond the tools into a, a kind of spaciousness, vastness, emptiness, where the emptiness takes over the focusing tools, where you give your thoughts over to God. Kind of a new spin on uh, Carrie Underwood's song, Jesus Take the Wheel. Give your thoughts over to God. That's how the contemplatives like uh, John of God describe it, where you're not thinking the thoughts anymore. There's just an emptiness that starts to sweep over you like a wave coming over the sand, washing over your legs. And it becomes a kind of effortless communion. Talk about vastness. And the only place that occurs is in that still point. How do we get to that still point? Through the tools that yoga gives us, especially sound and especially the breath. And I'll conclude with this. People think of the breath as a kind of therapeutic tool. Because when we take a deep breath, we actually affect the nervous system. We actually slow down the brain waves, bringing ourselves immediately into an alpha state. Sure, it's therapeutic. And that's, if that's all you use it for, that's fine. But we know, as yogis, that it's more than just a therapeutic tool. It's a spiritual tool. Because breath is that direct route to the divine. It takes us beyond the physical, even beyond the mind, beyond the mental noise, beyond the thoughts, and into that which we call God, or the vastness, or infinity, whatever word you prefer. I used to have an allergy to the word God in my 20s. Now, it doesn't really matter what you call it, because it's an experiential thing that can't be described anyway. All efforts are futile anyway just as the effort to describe vanilla is futile. 
You can write pages and pages, an entire graduate thesis on the taste of vanilla, and you'll be no better off in terms of understanding what vanilla really tastes like until you taste it. Just as you wouldn't get surgery by someone who's read books and books and books about how to make a proper incision, you would only allow someone who's got experience in making incisions operate on you. It's that experience that counts. It's not the word, it's not the description. Those are just pointers. And it's the breath that brings us into that experience called vastness, God, infinity. And so today's class will focus on the breath. And I have a very, very special treat for you during relaxation. It's Yogi Ji himself talking about the breath of God. Have you heard it? Some of you are nodding. 